the others join thank you sir today you will come or not to play yeah i'll come man i'll come tomorrow i may not come because we have some other work but on weekdays will come it is good to see you on the ground with them yes sir yeah Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, Natik. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just one or two more minutes, guys. I'll give it a start because the strength is just nine. Let's just wait for a couple of more minutes. A couple of minutes more, and then we'll give it a start. Uh, I hope everybody is able to see the laptop screen. Can you all see that? Yes, sir. Can you see the laptop screen? Yeah. Just one or two more minutes. Thank you.
Okay, guys. Good afternoon and welcome to the session. This is the last session for the week, guys. Can you can you hear me clearly? First of yes, all, sir. yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. As you know, we are going to have a holiday tomorrow and day after tomorrow. I thought of you know introducing some chapter, new chapter to you, would be of some help to to you know just read and understand the chapter on your own. Okay, so the fourth chapter is Landscape of the Soul by Nathalie Traveri. This is the chapter we are going to take up for the discussion, but we will not complete it. We will see half of it, okay? Because it's a relatively bigger lesson and discusses two different things here, associated and interconnected only. But I'm not just going to discuss both the things right now. We'll discuss the first thing and talk about the next thing next class. Okay. So let's give it a try to understand what we see in this along with the writer. See, landscape, landscape of the soul is the title of the lesson. And it is from the pen of Nathalie Traveri. See, the name indicates that she must not be, I mean, the writer must not be from India. There is, must be somewhere else, from somewhere else. Before I talk about that one, let me just remind you that we have finished the three lessons so far and two poems from the main course book. So the lessons, the first one is the portrait of a lady. Second one is we are not afraid to die, if we can all be together. The third one is the recently concluded one. What's that? Recently concluded one. The third chapter. No idea. Don't remember. The third chapter. How about poems? What are the two poems? We also finished it to short stories. Well, can I have the reply from somebody else? Can I have the reply? from somebody else. What are the names of the poems? Do you remember? So the Lambert and Top uh, and ah, one. And the next one, the previous one? A photograph. A photograph. What about the third chapter that we recently, we recently concluded? Discovering the Tut. Discovering Tut. Of course, why are you taking the time? Discovering Tut, the saga continues. Not discovering that Tut, but discovering Tut, the saga continues. Oh my God. If you're taking this much of time just to remember the title of the lesson, now what about the content? My goodness. I'm really surprised. Now I thought someone would, someone would reply instantly. I did not reveal it. I mean, I did not actually take my chance. Now you need to ask yourself whether you are really putting your effort sincerely towards the subject. And are there any students who have completely gone through all the videos, six videos, along with track based questions, attempting them and, and uh, the MCQs? It's a question mark. Now see, tomorrow and the after tomorrow is a holiday, as you know. After tomorrow is going to be Sri Krishna I mean Janmastam. Whatever is in pending should be finished, please. If you just postpone the work, it mounts up. That's what happens everywhere with everything. Just don't do that. Try to manage the things. You should do it. Right? So, 
The portrait of a lady by Kushwan Singh. We are not afraid to die. We can all be together by Garden Cook and Ellen East. And discovering that the saga continues by A.R. Williams. A photograph by Shirley Tarleton. The label on top by Ted Hughes. When it comes to supplementary reader, The Summer of the Beautiful White House by William Sarwayan. The address by Marka Minko. And the third one we will take up for the discussion next. It is Albert Einstein at School by Patrick Primley, a well-known biographer that we, we, we will discuss later on. Now this one, now it is a question. Please ask yourself. Now this one is the topic for the discussion hereafter. Landscape of the soul, of the soul. Not of the sea, not of the nature, not of something else, but of the soul. Let's try to understand through the writer. The writer Nadale Travarai is an art historian who became popular when she translated the work of William Dalrymple, a farmer, the city of Dins, not Dijins, Dins. And that's the work. When she translated, that is also related to art, some articles. When she translated that one into English, she just became very famous. Well, that was not written in English. And when she translated that into English, she came into limelight. She became very famous. And in reality, she is the wife of Belgian ambassador to India. And as being the wife to an ambassador, she could travel the world extensively with her husband. She went to different parts of the world. She went, she traveled extensively. Well, and, and you know, as she's, 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 master, she's having masters in history of art and archeology span from the University of Belgium, she had interests in archeology, span art, etc. And she has even just, she's now writing, uh, you know, about Indian, old, old Indian architecture, especially seen in old Delhi, about Jama Masjid, Chandini Chowk, which you must have heard. She's not internationally recognized writer, but she had her place in the history for all this contribution. She's not an internationally recognized or popular writer, okay, like Ted Hughes, but you know, she is also having some place in the annals of history. Some pages for her. That's a bit about her. So, based on what she had done in her life as far as education is concerned, and based on what she had done in her profession as a writer, you must have definitely taken a guess as what would be there in this lesson as well. It's all about art. It's all about art. And we can see especially how she draws a clear difference between Western painting or European point painting and Asian painting or Chinese painting. So she drew a clear cut difference there. She talks about art, painting, all that. She just gives some stories about the painters wherein she talks about the beauty of those paintings and the desires of those writers. What their wishes were when they painted and how the onlookers were supposed to look at those paintings and what they find in those paintings. How they are actually perceived. So that, those, those you know, criteria have been discussed through three stories, three different stories, wherein she draws a sharp contrast between European painting and Chinese painting. I mean, Eastern painting and Western painting. So that's a bit of, you know, bit of background about this one. And you know, this lesson also discusses one more thing. That is an article which is put here, gathered and put here by Nadalit Traverai. That's from in, an Indian, 
that is an article contributed to the hindustan times wherein the article discusses the outsider art or art brute which is quite a new term to all of you understand and this is the reason why it is relatively slightly difficult slightly not much difficult to understand the content and if you are an art lover surely you would enjoy this lesson even if you are not an art lover you can just have something to learn from this about art not about paintings but different forms of art well that's what we discuss here now as i told you this has two different parts from here to here is one part this is an excerpt from that means it's not the whole lesson it is just an extract some part from landscape of the soul ethics and spirituality in chinese painting well this part of the lesson the first part of the lesson is an extract from the main book the big book landscape of the soul ethics and spirituality in chinese painting so this is slightly edited also to suit to the standard now the second part that you see in the box getting inside outsider art from there to here it is an article contributed by an indian brinda suri in the newspaper the hindustan times published in the year 2005 on the 28th of august so let me just have a word about the first part and the second part and then in today's class we take a detailed discussion on the first part only we we have a word about the second part in the next class see the first part that is this as you see it in the screen it is an extract from the big book landscape of the soul of ethics and spirituality in chinese painting this is just slightly edited and given over here and what is here discussed is something different from what you see in the second part of course in the second part it's all about outsider art outsider art something very innovative and something which we come to know from the 1940s only 1940s only prior to that there was no such art called outsider art or art brut it started evolving from the 1940s only so but, but actually these two different topics in even though the content is different these two are interconnected because that both the both the uh, you know things talk about art only and so they are put together by natalie trevorai and title the lesson landscape of the soul landscape of the soul now let's have a detailed discussion on the first part see this one is a story about different painters and paintings the first part of it the first story is about as you see here a wonderful story see it is about a famous uh, uh, chinese artist named wu daozi who lived somewhere in the medieval period medieval chinese period he was a very nice art artist very talented one who lived in the 8th century medieval medieval period 8th century and at that time tan emperor zhuangzong zhuangzong was the ruler he was ruling the country china one day it so happened that the emperor tan emperor zhuangzong called are you able to follow me are we clear so far yes sir yes. ah fine fine thank you so one day this zhuangzong called this talented artist wu daozi to paint the walls of the palace with beautiful pictures see that's what the task or task given to 
the famous painter Udoji. See, this guy did it amazingly. He painted the, the, the walls of the palace beautifully, wherein he drew some uh, mountains, waterfalls, rivers, clouds, as you see it in the picture. It is a very old, old painting. So something like this, wherein he included clouds, river, blue sky, wildlife, waterfalls, mountains, and some of the people living in harmony, very peacefully. The best part of it, you know, he painted a cave also. He painted a cave like this, like you see it here. He painted a cave in that painting, in you know, on the wall. Surprisingly, when he was doing all that, the emperor visited. And you know, to the surprise and shock and surprise of the emperor, he was informed that there is a spirit or devil living in this uh, uh, um, cave. And saying so, he clapped his hands, this painter. Amazingly, the door of the cave got open. And this guy, leaving his painting brush in this world, entered that cave painted on the wall. And to the amazement of everybody, extreme amazement of the emperor, Tan Emperor Zhuang Zhong, he got disappeared in the cave. Just clamped his hand near the cave. The passes of the cave magically opened. He got inside the cave and got vanished. Well, these kind of stories are very common in Chinese legends. This is not a real story, but a legend. A legend is a story which is handed down from generation to generation without having an authentic proof. See, this generation tells or narrates this story to the next generation. And the next generation narrates the same story you know, to the following generation. Like this, the stories will be handed down from one generation to the other generation, maybe with or without changes. But these stories will not have you know, proofs, scientific reasons, or scientific, uh, scientifically, they're not scientifically proven. Actually, there was also a legend. If you can remember, Uh, a legend from North a thirsty and hungry, you know, fellow reached a house wherein a lady would be baking the, uh, you know, some bread when he asked for a bread, requested for a bread. She denied. Then she, sorry, he, he cursed her to get changed into a crow or some bird. Uh, I think it was a woodpecker. Thought, yeah, woodpecker, right. Yeah, woodpecker. And then she gets turned into a woodpecker. She just flows, flies away. Thank God you remember, even after three years. <laughs> well, it's a legend. There is no scientific proof to it, wherein you must have been given the definition of a legend. So like that, these, these are all some of the legends which, which challenges the believability, which challenges the logic. Of course, if you just look at the story from the logic, from the point of logic, it doesn't make any sense, does it? No way. How come the door of the passage of a cave opens when we clap and that too from a painting? And how come the painter enters it? And how come he gets disappeared and was never ever seen back in the kingdom anywhere by anybody? These are all posing some challenge to our believability, logic, right? But these are all legends. And these legends, such kind of legends, could be seen in plenty from these two guys, Confucius and Zhuangzi. These two are famous names in the 
Chinese mythology and Chinese legends. Especially this guy, Confucius, the first one, is also known as the best philosopher, whose quotations have been quoted here and there often. And see, here with this story, the, the, the writer, Trevor Roy, tries to show the knowledge of the mysti mystical inner world. See, it opened a portal to a different world. There. So here, she, stri she, she, she tries to show the knowledge of the mystical inner world of the then times, indirectly highlighting the, the speciality, the magicality of art. Of course, the painting. And the second part, I hope that is clear. Isn't it? I hope the story, the first story in the first part of this lesson is clear to everyone. Is it not clear? Hello. Am I in the class? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. It's clear. Please do respond. Today is a bitter day. Literally, I'll talk to you later. Right. So, now the second story in the first part of this lesson is this. See, here it's about another painter who believed in the spiritual magic of art. He painted some magnanimous dragon like this. However, he did not paint the eyes of it. You know the reason? He was very afraid that the dragon would come to life. <laughs> Something silly, right? No, not really. The other story reads like this only. As he was afraid of the fact that the dragon would come to life and, and, and uh, you know, would create a problem to the mankind, he did not draw the eyes to the dragon. Well, the belief that he had in his art was that he was frightened by the probability of bringing his heart, sorry, his art to life and falling a victim to a fiery dragon like this. So he did not draw. He might have exaggerated that too much, but it was his belief. It was his confidence. It was his opinion. Another story goes like this. In the 15th century, are we clear with the second story? So these small stories talk about yes, magicality, spiritual magic, the, the uniqueness of art of the then times especially. Now the 15th century, in the 15th century, there was a blacksmith called Quintin, Quintin Metzis, who fell in love with a painter's daughter. He was madly in love with her. But because of the difference in the professions, the girl's father could not give his daughter to this blacksmith. The difference between the professions. He was not ready to accept their relationship. But this guy, Quinton Metzis, somehow wanted to win her hand. You know what he did? Another exaggeration. One day, he just entered the painter's studio, the girl's father the girl's father's studio and painted a fly like this, fly, fly, house fly only, maybe any other fly. He just painted a fly on his latest panel. That means the one he was working on at that time. It had such moderate realism that it resembled a real one. And that guy 
the the girl's father tried to fly it by using his hand thinking that it would damage whatever he was working on but to his surprise he realized that it was not a real one and it was a painted one so he just simply got mesmerized with the talent of quinten and his skills determination to win his daughter's hand and the simplicity without you know exaggerating himself so he got convinced and got his daughter married to him finding his true love quinten became one of the greatest painters of his age another story read like this see these are all the stories which might be beyond belief which might be exaggerating which might be without logic which might be without scientific proof or evidence but these are all the stories which illustrate or describe different forms of art in two different regions two different places one in china east countries eastern countries two somewhere back in belgium europe as you see here this black smith is from belgium he is from a place called antwerp uh, you know why why she must have used belgium the writer navelin traveren any any particular reason for that any guesses because she is also a belgian do you remember that she is the wife of a belgian ambassador to india she is also a belgian probably that might have been the impact by using a place name called antwerp from belgium only belgium only and moreover as she is from europe belgium is in europe only france germany all that in europe the continent europe only which are known as western countries and china eastern country okay so through all these stories which are beyond belief and beyond logic illustrate different forms of art and their capacities abilities in simple terms magic but in a different way and from two different regions one from eastern countries example china and one from western countries example western countries or european countries example belgium see there are obvious differences between these two paintings painters and their wishes that we must understand here and that is the very purpose of behind the description of all these stories see here in china artists convey a, a deep purpose and emotion they give an essence of vitality but back in european painting there the art, artists are concerned more about external appearances and a perfect illusionistic uh, likeness like we have seen one in the form of a fly that gave a perfect illusionistic likeness which is different from the 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 what of his painting in china that gave an emotion deep purpose and a sense of vitality giving no importance to external uh, uh, exactness something too imaginative something too speculative something beyond logic something beyond you know scientific scientific things maybe something like magic so there we see you know an essence of vitality emotions deep rooted purposes from the painters or artists the back here in european painting what can we see giving more importance to external appearances to achieve the exactness or the reality of the of the you know existing objects like that quinten had given a kind of realistic look to the fly to win the hand of his beloved so they are more concerned their european painters or artists are more concerned about the external appearances 
and they try for a perfect illusionistic likeness while the chinese artists are more concerned about the purpose emotions and an essence of vitality to the paintings is that clear is that clear yes sir yes sir right there's one more concept called shan shui in in this only which i discuss later okay and after discussing that concept that's also you know given in the form of a story only shan shui concept okay that is a chinese concept well that that also talks about this, this one emotions deep deep rooted purposes and trying to give an essence of uh, vitality all that but that's not a painting a kind of thing you know story as you see over there it's a kind of uh, 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 you know bold painting of canvas in the, and that talks about some real life concept real life concept but being very magical and that's been so very popular and famous back in china that is called chinese concept that is called shan shui shan shui two things shan shui so i discuss this later in the next class please not now i'm just going to float one 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 uh, you know document right now that is the detailed explanation in that go through till page number 3 till the completion of page number 3 today and in the next class probably we may have a special class tomorrow we may have we may have okay if there is a special class please just join that we'll further this okay and so that you can have the time to go through the complete chapter okay on your own now i'll i'll, I'll float that uh, detailed document so just go through that document till page number 3 not all the pages yes there are around 5 uh, to 6 pages i feel so please just don't have to go through all that just give me a moment i'm just going to float that mm. please check it you got that one back in the whatsapp did you get that yes sir so just go through that document till the end of page 3 and of course the explanation for page 3 will also continue in page number 4 as well just just stop there okay the rest can be had for the discussion in the next session well in order to have the uniformity i'm just going to stop it here only when we have a merge class tomorrow there will be a special class 99.9% please attend to it and we will just wind up the discussion on this one so that you can go through the detailed lesson sorry original lesson on your own and you know by using today sorry tomorrow and day after tomorrow and so that we can have the other discussions in time to come as well So with that note let me just take the attendance to wrap up the session for today. I hope we are clear so far. The instruction is also clear as what to do with the document. They want was that clear? They want. They want garg. Yes sir. Did you understand what you need to do with the document shared with you? Yes sir. What what should we do? with that document that was shared that has just been shared they want right thank you good noor what should we have to do with the document shared with you so we have to read the document in page number 3 that's it hope that is clear they want yes sir that's great thank you for being honest well so that's the end of the class the attendance is also ready now you may leave have a good day ahead. great weekend as well thank you thank you sir thank bye, you sir thank you and bye thank, thank you, you.
Thank you, Andreas.